The following is a production of the Computer Information Systems Department at the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Hello and welcome. In this video, I'd like to discuss the ideas, vision, strategy, and tactics. For the purposes of our class, I'd like to briefly run through the following questions. What are vision, strategy, and tactics? How do we define these terms? What are the relationships between these terms? And what are some examples of these terms? Just to be clear, I'm going to teach through analogies and examples, and in doing this, I'm going to use examples that I think are relatively tangible to an American business student. The context that I've chosen are the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, The McDonald's Corporation, and finally, Amazon.com. These examples may seem simple and a little bit cheesy, but stick with me because I'm hoping you can extrapolate the lessons of vision, strategy, and tactics to the areas of business, information technology, and life that you care about and are interested in studying. To begin with, let's define vision. Vision is the state you ultimately want to achieve. It's where you want to go. In this context, then, strategy is what you want to do to achieve your vision. Tactics are defined as how you want to implement your strategy. For any given vision, there can be multiple strategies, and for any given strategy, there can be multiple tactics. Let's consider a few quick examples. The first chapter of the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by Robert Kiyosaki, is a very simple study of vision and strategy. I'd like to discuss chapter one of his book as an analogy. Kiyosaki presents a vision of life where the reader is financially free. We are free from the rat race. We do not have to go to work to pay our bills. We are free to spend our time however we want. We can educate ourselves, spend time with our family, be a Cub Scout leader, or simply goof off. To achieve this vision of being out of the rat race, Kiyosaki proposes a very specific strategy purchase as few liabilities as possible, and instead spend your money purchasing income earning assets such as income earning real estate, businesses, and stocks. In a nutshell, to achieve the vision of getting out of the race, Kiyosaki proposes a strategy, put your money to work for you so that you can stop working for money. To the dismay of many new readers, Kiyosaki is notably light on tactics. He does not give you insight on how to pick hot stocks or how to spot a good real estate investment. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is highly focused on vision and strategy. Just for fun, let's take a second and explore some of the other strategies people explore to achieve the vision of getting out of the rat race. One strategy that many Americans pursue every year is hope. Of course, what I'm calling the hope strategy, you probably call gambling, either playing the lottery, one tactic, or going to a casino, another tactic. For an extremely small number of people, the hope strategy pays off big time, but for the vast majority of players, the more heavily you invest in the hope strategy, the more money you will lose. Folks, I'm obviously trying to be kind of silly here, but in a dark way, I'm totally serious. For thousands of Americans, hope is their only retirement strategy. Another strategy to get out of the rat race is to inherit money. Two common tactics towards this strategy are to receive money from a rich relative or to marry someone who already has money. I'm not judging, I'm simply pointing out these tactics. Sick and diseased tactics, but tactics nonetheless. Another strategy is to have a lot of kids and hope that they collectively contribute enough pay to your bills to let you retire. Before machines, families did this because children were a built-in workforce. This strategy is still common in poor countries where the economy is agriculture-based. Another very real strategy for many people is to save a big chunk of money during their lives and then spend a portion of the saved up money each year while they are retired. One such tactic is to set a big portion of money instead of investing it and then draw from the principal. The problem with the strategy is that if you save a million dollars and you plan to spend $50,000 per year for 20 years, you need to die before 20 years is up, otherwise you're back to being reliant on your kids or the lottery. Obviously, there are many strategies and tactics out there for getting out of the rat race. The point I'm making is vision, strategy, and tactics are all around you. Let's look at another example. How about politics? Actually, how about not? 
But do let me make one point. It's not a far-fetched thesis that the men at the top of this slide would not have been elected except for their brilliant, ahead-of-their-times, game-changing rock star chief strategists. That's right. Steve Bannon, David Axelrod, Carl Rove, Dick Morris, and Lee Atwater, all credited with getting their man elected and all, love him or hate him, were masters of electoral strategy. If you want to learn history, turn on the History Channel. But if you want to learn about political strategy, I might suggest you start with the book, Bush's Brain, or the movie, The Boogeyman. Let's shift gears to business, and let's start with a simple question. What is McDonald's strategy? Seriously, I invite you to pause this video and ask yourself, what is McDonald's strategy? I ask students this question as part of our discussions every semester, and the answers are always very consistent. Sell fast food, sell Happy Meals, speed of service, low price. But if you're going to understand the strategy at McDonald's, we need to do a little role playing. Just imagine, it's the last week of July and you're headed to Wally World with the family. The car's packed, you pull out of the driveway, you're 15 minutes down the road, and what do you hear from the back seat? Daddy, I gotta go potty. What? I told you to go before we left. I know, but I really gotta go. Uh, are you kidding me? And just then, what do you see? The golden arches. You're saved. Here, you have to think about what taking your kid to the bathroom was like before McDonald's. For those of you born after 1985, you're going to think I'm joking. But before McDonald's, when you were on the road and you had to go to the bathroom, you typically pulled over at a gas station. The door was locked, so you went and asked the attendant if you could use their bathroom. And they growled and they handed you a hubcap with the key to the restroom chained to it. No joke because they didn't want you to steal the key. And if this isn't bad enough, here's what you could have expected to see once you open the door. Almost never any soap. Lots of times no hot water, sometimes not even a seat on the toilet. Taking your kids to the can during a road trip was a complete disaster. Was this a mistake? No way, the gas station didn't want you to use their bathrooms. Bathrooms were seen as a liability. The gas station had to clean them. They had to pay to stock them with soap and toilet paper and clean up after vandals. And now back to our story. It's okay, it's okay kids. We can go to McDonald's and use the bathroom. We'll be in and out five minutes tops. I'll just sit in the car, the kids go pee and we're on our way. So you pull in, but you know, it's gonna be a long drive. You'd better try. So you go in, you do your business, and as you're walking out, you meet your family and that same little voice says, Daddy, I'm hungry. What? Actually, you know, it does smell pretty good. And it's going to be noon in two hours. Got to eat sometime, right? You guys want a burger? Yeah, huh? Okay, let's get a burger. And what kind of burger do you guys want? Hey, how about a Happy Meal? Before McDonald's, everybody saw people who needed a bathroom as a liability. Something that was going to cost them money. McDonald's saw people who needed a restroom as an asset. Mr. Smith, you and your family are always welcome to come into our restaurants and use our immaculate bathrooms. And while you're in our building, we hope that you and your family will consider joining us for a delicious meal. McDonald's strategy was to sell meals to families. It's ridiculously simple, but if you pay close attention, McDonald's has consistent strategic alignment. Everything they do, all the tactics they employ, are very strongly aligned with the strategy of selling meals to families. McDonald's has always catered to the whole experience from the potty that brought you into the store until the playroom for the kids at the end. Whether you're a fan of McDonald's or not, you would do well to think about McDonald's and their strategy. By the way, if you want to know McDonald's vision, all you need to do is read the first few pages of Chapter 4 from Rich Dad Poor Dad. Ray Kroc explains it himself. Sheer genius. Let's look at one more example. In chapter one of our textbook, the authors point out that IT strategy has evolved in the past few decades. In the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, the IT strategy of almost every company was to simply automate tasks, to do the same tasks that humans were doing, 
but to use computers to do them faster and more accurately. For example, rooms full of humans doing mathematics at an accounting or insurance firm became one desktop PC. By the end of the 90s, there was a sea change in how computers were used. Innovative companies started to view IT from a strategic rather than a tactical point of view. Let's consider an example. Keeping in mind that a strategy is what you do and a tactic is how you do it, I'd like you to consider the question, what is L.L. Bean's strategy? If you aren't familiar with L.L. Bean, you can ask this question of countless other stores. Eddie Bauer, Land's End, Cabela's, REI, Macy's, the list goes on and on. All of these stores have the same strategy. What is it? I invite you to stop this video and think about it because I purport that all of these companies have the same exact strategy. The strategy at L.L. Bean, Eddie Bauer, Cabela's, and on and on is simple. They want to sell you what they sell. That's it. And friends, this is the same strategy that has been pursued since the first caveman opened up his bearskin coat and grinned to his friend, You won't buy rock? Now let's consider Amazon. Amazon is a different beast entirely. What is Amazon's strategy? I invite you to pause the video and think about this question. When I ask this question of students, they typically tell me to sell you everything or to sell you anything. Well, even Bill Gates can't purchase everything, and there are plenty of things that Amazon can't or won't sell you. For example, Confederate flags or guns. Rather, I would purport that Amazon's strategy is to sell you something very specific. They want to sell you what you want to buy. And how do they know what you want to buy? You tell them, of course. You type into the search engine what you want to buy, and they show you everything that they sell that might satisfy that desire. Folks, this is not a small thing. L.L. Bean does not want to sell you Eddie Bauer stuff. REI does not want to sell you Cabela's stuff. But Amazon doesn't care. They want to sell you whatever you want, whatever brand. You can do what L.L. Bean and Eddie Bauer and REI do without computers. These companies were successful as mail order or brick and mortar stores long before computers came around. But computers and the web are critical tactics that enable Amazon's strategy. Amazon's strategy simply can't be done using catalogs or retail stores. It's ridiculous to even think about it. This evolution towards new kinds of IT strategies for offering value is what's described in Chapter 1 of our textbook. What I'm calling IT strategy, our book calls value propositions. And like our book says, initially, IT strategy started as just automating what humans were already doing. Our author describes it as exchanging IT dollars for salary dollars. As IT strategy evolved, we started to use computers and networks to do things that no number of humans could do. New value propositions, new strategies, companies like Amazon. Think about these web service providers, Facebook, Twitter, and Skype. These companies created strategies that weren't feasible until computers and high-speed internet were available. In the context of our discussion, Facebook, Twitter, Skype, YouTube, these are all strategies. Computers and the internet were the tactic that enabled these strategies. Our time is just about up for now, so let's take a minute to review what we've learned and then wrap up. Today we learned about vision, strategy, and tactics. We learned basic definitions of these terms and how to differentiate them. We learned a little about the relationships between these terms. Strategies support visions and tactics support strategies. We learned a little about what it means when vision, strategies, and tactics are aligned. Finally, I hope this video got you thinking about some examples of vision, strategy, and tactics. I hope it's obvious that vision, strategy, and tactics are ideas that occur at every level of our lives. Strategy is everywhere. It's in business. It's in politics. It's in society. It's in war. It's in economics. 
to understand these topics and how they work, who wins and who loses, and where the future is going, we need to understand vision, strategy, and tactics. We also need to understand why it is dangerous to confuse them. One of my cardinal rules is never confuse a strategy with a tactic. If you want examples of this mistake being made to terrible effect, I suggest you do some research about American Reconstruction after the Civil War, the Treaty of Versailles, the American War in Vietnam, or the American War on Drugs, to name just a few. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something, and I welcome your feedback. Till next time, ABS.